Welcome back to Nets Republic. I titled the video the way I did and not what I wanted to because one, the video is late, my fault. And number two, because like, it's just a situation of like, I wanna make sure the video gets as much eyes as possible. So by titling it the way I did as a, a positive Ben Simmons video, I was able to get y'all to watch. But listen, um, sorry, I am noticing a little bit of an issue, and I know taking off the Atlanta hoodie just to reveal an Atlanta shirt is insane, I apologize. But I'm noticing a little bit of an issue here. And let me know what you think. It's just my little simple conspiracy theory, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. When I was talking about the church of Blow It Up, Ben Simmons was not really a part of the equation, but I figured it couldn't hurt in the direction that the team was going. And during the summer, again, I, I, I honestly thought Cam Thomas was going to get traded, you know, so I, I wasn't I wasn't factoring him into my positive Ben Simmons spins. However, now we're here and we're here at the conclusion of two completely different tracks that the Nets are basically both going for. Now, the only reason why we have Cam Thomas starting is because Cam Johnson is hurt, and more people seem to be dropping like flies this preseason. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr. is now hurt. We could honestly make an entire conversation about the dynamics of the Nets and the team we just played because there was some type of like weird friction between the two sides where it's like maybe we'll call them the world team just to keep a certain type of algorithm away from this video um the world team plays by a different set of rules and i feel like that wasn't vibing with the nba players and you can see jacques vaughn was getting involved and dennis smith wasn't particularly happy about some of the closeouts and the clear goaltending that the world team was like not aware is goaltending again i just basically the frustrations we have when we play in fiba they were having playing here and it was just very interesting. I don't think they took too kindly to the fact that there were different rules. But I feel like if we were to do that in FIBA, America is looked at not here nor there. There was just there was just some weird, weird cultural conflicts going on in terms of the game, in terms of basketball. You know, the 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 physicality that the Nets were playing with, it seemed like it wasn't being reciprocated in the best way for the world team that we were playing. Again, just to, just a lot of different things where it's like they clearly play by a different set of rules and coming over here to play in our league, it just wasn't going too well. And I'm happy, again, I didn't watch the fourth quarter, but I'm just hoping that things didn't get too crazy because I genuinely thought Jacques Vaughn and Dennis Smith were going to start swinging, but that's not the end of there. Anyway, we can save that for another video. I want to specifically make this a conspiracy video involving Ben Simmons. Now, the only reason why we have Cam Thomas starting is because individuals are hurt. So, like, we're getting by default minutes by Cam. Like, there's, there's no, there is no earthly way to justify him not starting right now, right? So, that's why he's in the starting lineup. But at the same time, you're seeing the Nets pushing their general Brooklyn Bridges, Ben Simmons agenda that they've been trying to push for the longest time now. And now they're really getting it off. But the issue is... While it is great that we have Ben Simmons, and it's clearly prime Ben Simmons, the way that he's literally rolling on the ground going after loose balls and the 50-50 balls and all that shenanigans, him hitting literal Kobe fadeaways in the post, I mean, being super aggressive in every aspect of the game you can possibly think of, some of the assists, everything. While that is great that we have prime Ben Simmons and that's a cheat code and the league is in trouble... I can see how that benefits the Mikel Bridges agenda. I don't see how that benefits Cam Thomas in his minutes. Now, in the first game, we play the who do we play? The Cavs? Who do we play last game? I can't remember who we played last game. I was Schlander. Lakers, Lakers, Lakers. Okay. In that game, it was nice to see Cam get his. But it was basically because. Mikel was so off offensively, be it first game jitters or whatever it is, that those attempts that he normally takes weren't even there because he didn't even want the ball. Everyone else was kind of out of sync. It was our first game. There wasn't, there was a, like, there's familiarity, but like they know each other and they've been in camp, but it's like actually getting on the court. Hoopers will hoop. And you could tell that 
you know, a unconscious scorer like Cam is going to get his, but the rest of the team needs to have more practice to be a cohesive unit. But in game two, where everyone kind of understands the game plan, no offense, but we're playing inferior talent, it's easier to run within the flow of the offense. And our offense, whether y'all want to admit that or not, is Ben Simmons. Again, he is making Jacques Vaughn look like a genius. Just like how we were never really on Steve Nash's neck like that until Harden got hurt. When you have someone running the team that's as intelligent as Ben Simmons is, we can, we can ignore we can ignore the shenanigans of Jacques Vaughn. So since our offense is Ben Simmons, offense and defense, the 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 team is centered around Ben Simmons. And what I mean by that is his impact. He's got the ball a majority of the time. He's making decisions of what happens a majority of the time. And on defense, especially with no Claxton out there because he has glute soreness, which I won't make a joke on the Nets Republic, but that's not even there. Whatever's going on with his booty, but that's not even there. Ben Simmons is your defensive anchor now. With Harry Styles the third or Giles, whoever. Ben Simmons is your defensive anchor now. So Ben Simmons is running every aspect of the team out there. With Spencer Dinwiddie running shooting guard, hitting the crazy, like, out-of-bounds threes and stuff like that. Ben Simmons is running the team. And what have we seen in the past? Ben Simmons plays his best when he's surrounded by a dominant big or just a rim runner and shooters. And not just and not and not scores in particular, but shooters. I mean, you'll have your exceptions where Tobias Harris is able to play the role and just be along the three point arc and just catch and shoot. But I mean specific shooters. Mikel Bridges is able to sneak into that role and just catch and shoot, catch and shoot, catch and shoot. Occasional pump fake, go in the paint, sling it out, or get the easy layup or something like that. But for the most part, Mikel is out there catch and shoot off Ben Simmons' defensive collapses, which is crazy that he's respected in the paint. Again, we were playing an inferior team that's not even in the league, but that's something to do there. That is what the team is. What I'm trying to get at is Cam doesn't play that way. That's not Cam Thomas's game. Now, is he capable of doing it? Yes, but he's a scorer. The same way you wouldn't have Devin Booker just standing in the corner waiting for the kick out. I mean, you can, but that's just not how he plays. That's not how he's the most efficient. You don't do that with like over the top offensive talent like that. You just let them get it in the foot. You know what I mean? Because he's a scorer. He can shoot, he can shoot, but he's a scorer. He is a three-tier, three-level scorer. Minus the posties, but who knows? He's never been asked to do that, so who knows what else he's capable of. And I truly believe that the more Ben Simmons gets comfortable running the team, because that's what he's literally doing, it's, it's, it's Ben Simmons' team. Y'all can do Brooklyn Bridges all you want, it's Ben's team. I don't know how that benefits Cam. We've seen on multiple occasions where you're asking him to just be a spot-up shooter. That's not what he does. That's not what he's the, the most comfortable in. That's not how he gets his rhythm. Cam's got to be able to, like, and yeah, it's not like full-on ISO, but you can want to play for him. And that's when you start to notice the issues of Jacques Vaughn. Granted, Ben Simmons is running the team, but how it is that Ben operates is he has the ball, he's pushing the pace, you run with him, Ben's got his head on a swivel and just like dishes the ball over to someone for them to get their stuff off. If Jacques Vaughn was a real coach, he would understand that you have someone in your starting lineup who doesn't operate off that. That's not how they're the most successful. If we had a coach with a brain and you would draw specific plays for Cam for him to get his stuff off. I mean, 
a simple Iverson cut in the mid-range would give him a chance to get his stuff off. Let him get a cool little, you know what I mean, run around the pig, get the Kobe uh, fadeaway type. You know what I mean? It's possible. And that's coming from me. I don't know plays, and I at least know that. That way he's taking a shot or he's fading over to the side. It's technically off the dribble a little bit. You know what I mean? Let him get in his bag. It's not a stationary shot because that's not how he gets his rhythm. And I don't want to go into another situation where we are wasting a Cam Thomas season. Ben is great. Don't get me wrong. But let's not be so obsessed with this new style of play that we ignore Cam. Because I don't know who, did, who needs to hear this, but the upside of Cam Thomas is better, maybe not more important for the team, but better than Ben and his confidence in running the team. There are no other negatives to the game. They played great. Defensively, they played well. They got smacked around for a little bit, but then they got it together and started to blow them out as they should in the third quarter. But I'm concerned about Cam. Cam Thomas is just too talented to go back to the role of stand in the corner and shoot. I think it's great that he's getting a lot of minutes out there with the starters, but they are by default minutes. And do not be surprised if at some point, again, we don't know how, you know, we don't know the severity of the Cam Johnson in, uh, interview. The Cam Johnson injury is, but do not be surprised if at some point we see Lonnie Walker starting and Cam is coming off the bench again. Do not be surprised because in the interest of us not having a coach and Ben Simmons is just going to carry us. And I hope I'm explaining this right. I hope I'm wording this correctly. Not Ben Simmons is going to offensively carry us. I'm talking about he's running the literal team. And again, Mikel Bridges is able to fade into the background and just catch and shoot his way to, to, to rack up points. He can do that. He, he's from a system where that was his role. What I'm trying to say is that's not what Cam Thomas does. And I don't want to sacrifice Cam Thomas's game because Jacques Vaughn doesn't know how to coach. Because there's a world where you can have both. Again, look at the Sixers. You had Ben Simmons doing that, surrounded by basically a bunch of 3 and D shooters. And then when all else fails, give the ball to Joel Embiid. Now, obviously, there is a height differential here between Cam Thomas and Joel Embiid. But just, like, copy that structure. Because I'm telling you, Mikel can just basically assume the position of a higher volume attempting Tobias Harris. But for that moment where you have another clear superstar in the making, there has got to be a way to, 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 to draw out a system or a game plan where Ben is aware, okay, push the pace, get the ball out, freedom of movement, cool, pass the ball a lot, nice basketball, right? But there has got to be somewhere in there that you can take advantage of Cam too. And we know he's capable of doing it. You just need a coach that will draw the play. And it's a shame that how this is going to end up, mark my words, it's going to be Lonnie Walker. I'm telling you, it's Lonnie Walker. He's going to take Cam's minutes because he can just catch and shoot three and D. And that's the system that Jacques Vaughn wants to implement. Not because he thinks it's successful, but because he can't coach. He'll sit there and say he wants to get away from iso ball and all that stuff. But it's because he can't coach. It's not a philosophy. It's not the advancement of the game. It's not based on plus minuses and analytics. It's because he can't coach. And it is significantly easier to have the game be free-flowing and everybody just gets their shenanigans off the catch-and-shoot. That is significantly easier to coach 
Drake's son Adonis, a literal toddler, can coach that. And I believe stuff like this is just showing that we have an issue in coaching. I, I know Cam Thomas has said multiple great things about Jacques Vaughn, and I get that. But I'm telling you, I'm seeing it now. And this is the stuff I'm talking about by you see stuff in preseason, and it is literally giving you the blueprint of what is going to happen over the course of the season. I'm telling y'all, I'll give it till Thanksgiving. Maybe that's too soon. No, nope, I'll give it till Thanksgiving. I guarantee you. And I could be wrong on it being Lonnie Walker. It might be Royce O'Neal. I don't know. But someone of that ilk is going to take all of Cam Thomas's minutes. And barring some crazy injury, we don't see Cam Thomas anymore. He's on the bench again. Mark my words. If I'm wrong, I'll be wrong. But in about a month, we're going to come back to this. And I have a scary feeling I'm right. Is it because Cam Thomas' style of game is inefficient? No, it's because we have a coach that doesn't know how to use the talent in front of him. He doesn't know how to use the weapons on his Gundam. He knows how to use the sword. You know what I mean? He knows how to use the Gatling guns on the shoulder. He knows how to use the rocket boosters or whatever. Maybe there's a little whip or something like that, a little hyper whip or something like that. But if you notice that every time the Gundam is getting attacked, there's a bunch of, you know, juking and moving over to the side and like dodging and stuff like that. And we're sitting there asking, why don't he just use the shield? He don't know how to use the shield. But y'all gonna sit there and tell me we just have an inadequate shield. No, no, wrong answer. It's because coach is a bum. but we'll see you in a month. I'll see y'all next video.